Here in feature 01 in unit S, we found a projectile point Lauren. just above the cobbles down here. And the point is made of basalt That's cool. and is a stemmed point. Um, so this is a complete projectile point of the Western STEM tradition. It was just found in our unit, Unit E. Um, it's from the wind dust phase of the Western STEM tradition, which we know from the concave base here, which is very diagnostic of that culture. Um, and that culture would have been around about eight to 11,000 years ago. And the sediment that we're digging in right now is about 9,000 years old, so that, that makes sense in terms of context. So I'm working here at Cooper's Ferry in units O and P and R and S. We're getting up in the alphabet now. And um, in this part of the wall, you can see there are two large rocks. And these large rocks are set into glacial dust, or loess, as it's known. And this is pretty unusual. From a geologic point of view, we don't really see big rocks like this getting blown into windblown dust, of course. Uh, so it kind of stood out as an unusual feature of the stratigraphy here. And as we started to clean it up and look into it more, we realized that underneath it was a bit of a darker horizon through there. And as we went deeper, and started to clean it up some more, I could see that there was dark sediment continuing. So with my trowel and dustpan, I worked to remove the fill material from the 60s and 70s that's on top of this. So I'm removing that away from undisturbed sediments through here. And in the process of this, I started to see some flakes. So that got me to think that I should probably be very careful. You know, I, maybe I'm getting into undisturbed sediments. The flakes began to increase. Uh, as did the disappearance of gravelly sediment and so on. And then I found a very nice discovery. I found right here a stemmed projectile point made from basalt. found this piece of a biface and as you can see it was a very large piece it was likely approximately like this size and you can see that it's worked on both sides and that's what indicates a biface so this is a 3d printout of a projectile point found by Lauren Davis in unit a and it's three times the size of the point that was found um, what Otto and I just found in Unit J actually can be superimposed over this, and this is the actual size, or likely the actual size, of what this point was, which is very impressive. This is a discovery that we just found today over in Unit B Northeast, and we are actually not sure of the specific use of this tool. Now, it's made out of a really soft stone, possibly a soapstone or some sort of talc, and that will take further lab analysis to determine exactly what it's made out of. But the really interesting features on this piece are that the top half of it, or what I presume is the top half of it, has been scraped to this rounded shape that goes down into a point and the bottom half has been scraped flat. And then right here, a hole was bored directly through it. There are many assumptions of what the use of this object is, and it will also take further analysis to determine that, but 
This is by far one of the more unique pieces found at the Cooper's Ferry site. Yeah. So what we found here is a hammerstone. This is only the third hammerstone that we found in the entire site, and it's actually the second one that we found in this unit. And normally, hammerstones are kind of hard to identify because they're just river cobbles, so they're just round rocks. But this one has a lot of really good evidence of being hammered against other rocks on both ends, so here and here. So we're over here at Unit V at Cooper's Ferry, and I was cleaning up um, an area where there's some pit fill from a pit that's kind of dug down into loose material. And in the process of removing the pit fill, I found another stem point. And so stem projectile points are not that uncommon over in this area, and we're finding more of them associated with pits. 